Welcome back, folks, to episode 87 of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. I am Douglas Smythe from phoenixshaving.com. And to my this side, Scott Austin Miller, the clean shaver. Say hi, Scott. Hey, everybody. How's it going? And I believe over here I have Mantic59 from the Sharpologist. Howdy, howdy. And our very, very, very special guest today, Craig the freaking barber. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Give me the music. I'll give you the music. Nice. It's, it, this has been a long time coming, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, nice. uh, Craig has been, man, he's been on the scene for such a long time, kind of on the fringe of the wet shaving community. Uh, actually, before there were like 1,500 YouTubers, <laughs> there was probably about five. And Craig the Barber was one of them that I used to check out a lot. <laughs> there you go. Got a Thank lot you. of inspiration. Uh, awesome. And his blog, too, The Men's Room, if you haven't checked that out, you need to. That was a classic back on the day, too. Yes. Thank you. And, you know, we had him on the podcast, the Mustache and Blade podcast back in the day. That was fun. Um, and then we just kind of lost touch with each other. I mean, I know you, the last time I spoke with you, Craig, yeah. your soap was about to come out. You were really pushing for the soap. Yes, yes. And then flip, and you were gone. Yeah. It just, it's so, like I, I announced it, and then the announcement was my disappearing act. Yeah, was, yeah, uh, pretty much. <laughs> at least that's what I experienced. I don't know if that's what really happened, but uh, my life like just got – but um, for those of, of the, uh, our attendees watching that don't know who you are, Craig, do you mind giving a little background? Sure. Oh, I don't mind at all. Um, so my name is Craig, uh, Craig the Barber. That's what I go by. I chose Craig the Barber. One of the biggest reasons why is because no one can pronounce my last name very well. So <laughs> I, uh, I chose. I know how that the, feels. I, oh, are you kidding me? It's, it's a mess. So Craig the Barber works pretty well. And so essentially what I uh, typically am known in being is a barber, a men's grooming consultant, expert, a gentleman that has uh, basically taken an opportunity to really um, embrace the community of barbering and try my very best to put a stamp on the men's grooming and barbering space coming from the expert background of being a barber. So uh, men's, uh, the mensroom.com was the first attempt into there. I, I just saw that there was a reason for not just educating the customer in my seat, but I saw an opportunity to be able to educate as many people across the world with the mensroom.com. And so that's where it started. And then it just blossomed from there with um, becoming a spokesperson for uh, Lab Series Can Care for Men and then uh, Phil Snorelko and, you know, really taking an opportunity to really expand the knowledge base. And um, barbering has always been my passion, will continue to be that. I love to cut hair and I love to shave. And um, now I'm here talking yes, to you, you guys are. about shaving. And that's my one of my favorite topics. Yeah, no, and that's great. So, guys, we're going to be taking, you can keep, Posting your questions all day long, and we'll take them probably in about 10, <clears throat> 20 minutes from now. But uh, let, I just want to talk about this. Oh, <laughs> Bird Avenue. This is what I'm talking about. This is like I heard about this. You were, you were raving about it, and then I heard, hadn't heard about it again. This stuff yeah. is awesome, Craig. Did you get Thank to use this? Oh, yeah. And oh, in, yeah. Fact, uh, in fact, Craig uh, enlisted my help with some of the uh, beta testing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I was involved with it. Oh yeah. yeah, no, this stuff Very is cool. awesome. The post shave feel, that, Craig. That, so Craig, that was near the end of the process, wasn't it? It, it was basically yeah. you received the final uh, sample um, oh. before it went into big production. You know, sometimes it kind of changes. You know, Douglas, you know that when you go oh, yeah. from small to then large, and all yeah, of a sudden scaling up, tweaks a little bit. But um, you received the the last uh, go round before I uh, went into mass mass production. And so uh, I appreciate your feedback with it. It was definitely. Um, something that was very important for me to hear. Not only that, I still uh, ask for as much feedback as possible because at the end of the day, um, I'm still small enough and hopefully I will always remain that um, active in the manufacturing and creation of these products that if something's wrong and people are consistently saying something is off, then hey, let's go to the drawing board and fix it. You know, and that's yeah. the bottom line. You know, right. it, it's, it's skin care, you know, before yeah. anything else and beard care and so. Um, I'm happy so many people are really enjoying it. Oh, it's great. I had no idea. I, I had such, I've been having the greatest shaves with this, but I, oh, that's I was so, so awesome. shocked. I mean, I, I expected nothing but the best, but I mean, it was like, the oh, scent too is like, it's right up there with, I mean, thank some you of the so best much. stuff. 
It was a long time. I mean, obviously you received the, um, when we spoke years ago, the goal was to launch that shaving cream many years ago. But funny enough, after that ended, um, you know, the stories on, on Mantic's uh, uh, Sharpologist page, the article is really, really big on how I was able just to be much more transparent. Um, and I really just explained pretty much how everything went with the, the goal to launch the product. And it stopped and I went back to the drawing board. It was actually a really good shaving cream that I, I was almost finished with. Yeah. And I just went to, from scratch again. And so that was, that literally has very little in comparison to what the original one had. Wow, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's great so, to finally so, hear the recipe. So you went from story. a very complicated recipe to a to a very simple. Well, I think they're. They Is that what you're up, saying? No, it actually ended up being just as complicated. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm looking at the ingredients. And I don't think it's simple at all. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they're just the, the goal. Uh, ultimately, was to deliver exactly what this cream delivered. Mm -hmm. But essentially, um, it was a. I had a partner in the in the process originally, and mm -hmm. so when that broke off. I just decided, you know, I just am going to just start from scratch, create my own. And with the same, obviously, geared focus towards delivering that. Yeah. But the product that I ended with actually didn't, wasn't complete because it didn't deliver what mine currently does. So it was, mm. uh, I had a little bit more tweaking to go. And that was kind of one of the, the challenges yeah. there. You know, when you want to, when you're a perfectionist, sometimes you, you stand in front of yourself a little bit too much and yeah. hold uh, progress up. But uh, I think I'm glad that I was able to, um, hold progress up in this particular yeah, yeah. you certainly awesome. delivered and Thank for you. those of you who have the chat enabled i just put on the link uh oh, to the article on charpologist that uh, craig okay. wrote that kind of goes into the background in that whole process yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I'm going to put up the link to his website, too. We'll, we'll touch upon all this stuff at the end, and I'll put it in the show notes when we're on YouTube as well, but there's the men's room as well. But yeah, what, another thing I've, I've been doing with this is I've been using a scentless shave soap, but using this as a pre-shave soap too. <laughs> rubbing it in first, and then like lathering that. on top. Of it. So uh -huh. it's like, the post-shave feel is just, it's it's awesome. It That's, is really good stuff. I, I, you're saying all the all the hot button. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so perfect because that was exactly what I was uh, going for. You know, a lot of you guys, I'm sure you you know this. I was um, I've always been a strong proponent of pre-shave oils. Yeah. I know Mark uh, Romantic said that um, he's, you know, he's a little iffy on it. Doesn't He doesn't need it. And so I was thinking to myself, you know, I really enjoy using a pre-shave oil in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking to myself, I, could, I see the advantage of having a pre-shave oil in the barbershop because, and, or, and for example, for myself, when I go out and do events and things of that nature, you're not quite sure what the environment is going to give you. And sometimes the shave cream dries up. Yeah. And so pre-shave oil helps a lot. And so I was thinking to myself, what if I could create something not just for myself from a barber, barbering perspective on how I work, but other barbers that may have the same challenge that don't use pre-shave oils and right. have to keep relathering. So I focused on the, the heavy oils and the butters in there to really keep it moisturized yeah. and deliver all the way through the process. Because, you know, when you shave, you also potentially dry out the skin. And I wanted to make sure that everything was there every step of the way to optimize the aftershave bomb. Yeah, you really did a great job on this guy. And I'm so glad we bumped into you at uh, the Big Shave oh, West. You, Otherwise, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. I know, because I was supposed to be there the year before. And I, I missed it. And I was like, I'm not missing it this time. And I was so yeah. glad to be there and just pop in and be a spectator. And really, it was that was a fantastic show. I will definitely be there next year. That's that's not even a question. Was I, awesome. I was on the I was on the panel talking about something and I actually saw him walk in. It's like Greg, <laughs> Greg's here. It's like I pointed at him and he acknowledged me. It's like stay there. I gotta right. talk to you. Yeah. 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 I wasn't going anywhere. That was an amazing experience. Loved every bit of it. Well, it's, it's so funny that like you guys knew knew who Craig was. Like, and I'd heard the name Craig the Barber, uh -huh. but I'd never seen. I'd never been able to put a face to the name wow and so, so cool. i and i saw you walking around with the name tag on that said craig and i was like okay it's craig, <laughs> <Some guy named laughs> craig. craig. and and then That's i heard funny. these guys say afterwards like oh craig with the barber said, that was craig the barber oh that's so cool yeah man that was <gasps> yeah that, that's that's so cool to be you know the one thing that i can really take from that experience at that event was how huge the wet shaving community has grown. How so many guys, I mean, they've always been there. Guys have been shaving for forever. Right. But so many guys are embracing shaving in so many ways. It's so great to see that, you know, because yeah. 
you know, a lot of us are confused out there. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I joke all, all the time that, you know, watch enough commercials during Super Bowl and basketball games and, you know, the guy swiping across the face with a One swipe. blade. And you're just like, no, that's not, don't follow that guy. That's yeah, that's wrong. not real. You know, that's <laughs> not real. Uh, it looks cool, but it's not real. And so I'm glad that we're all the, here just really doing our part, you know, um, because, you know, someone's got to really take up that responsibility and so many of us yeah. are doing it. So it's great. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, I, I, I love the fact that, uh, that barbering is becoming a much more like it, it used to be back in the day. It was a very legitimate uh, occupation. Right. And for 20, 30, 40 years or so, it kind of lost its. Yeah, it did. Steam. It's sizzle. Steam. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So now it's coming back and it's, and guys are recognizing that, you know what, there is a better way to do this. And right. it's awesome to be able to go to somebody who really knows what they're doing. Right. And, and guys that can say, you know what, I'm a barber and I, I good at my job and I love what I do yep. and yep. I make, and I make a good living doing it. And that's yep. such a cool thing for people to it's be able to best. do. Now. It's, it's the it's, best. It's a culture too. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's coming back. And that's the, what I love about it. And I, I yeah. say this so often that what tattoo artists were in the nineties, Barbers are nowadays. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. young guys, they want to be barbers now. And like yeah. you see the rockabilly guys, they get you know the, you can get some drinks there. You place to <laughs> relax. You know, mm -hmm. it's a place to hang out and just you know chew the fat too. Yeah. Well. I mean, there's right. a whole exactly. culture around it that's coming back it's that's been, been lost for a long, long time. I don't know what happened. Long time. I, it was, well, I can tell you one, two big things that challenged uh, that actually hurt the barbering industry was long hair in the 60s and then the uh, safety razor by Gillette. Those two things mm -hmm. totally crippled, not crippled, but it hurt the barber industry a lot because oh, sure. barbers at the time didn't know how to cut long hair. And it was a kind of a culture shift of these barbers saying they didn't like guys growing long hair anyway. So right. they would run away from those guys. And those guys would run to the salons. And that's how mm -hmm. the salons got big. Then Vidal Sassoon came on the scene. And right. barbers, barbers were basically now just looked at as the old guys with the clippers in their hand. And yeah. so it's changed now. And I'm so happy about it. It yeah. really has. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there's some, some barbershops that, that haven't changed at all. But I don't think yeah. they ever really get it. And they're fading out. But the ones yeah. that get it are sticking around. They, yeah. they mm -hmm. figured out ways, you know, attracting an audience again. Absolutely. And, <laughs> you know, a, quality a was inside. always a gathering place, and now it's exactly. just, and it's coming back, but in an updated sort of way. You where yeah. you you know, like some of these places, you can buy a drink or coffee, or yeah. Pot, yeah, or you know, do other things, say, yeah. play pool or or yeah. whatever. So it's really just got kind of an updated vibe of what it was in the fifties, where yeah. guys used to sit around and you know, exactly. Chit -chat. You, you yeah, right. on the head. yeah, and you know, guys are overall just wanting to. They're taking a lot better care of themselves as well. They're a lot more right. aware of fashion. They're a lot more aware of um, looking good. You know, that's uh, true. And it's and for a long time that had a stigma of being exactly. like if if you're concerned about your appearance, if you're concerned about how you're groomed, then you're not manly. Right, right. And that's that that's it's the complete it's antithesis of, of manliness. You know, manliness nowadays is being able to yeah, sure, it's being able to provide for your family and you know, being able to work hard, but it's also knowing how to put your best self forward. I yeah, know, and and grooming yourself properly is a, is a huge part of that. Yeah, so yeah, like when I say the culture is coming back, the barbershop culture, it's kind of, but not as a caricature of itself. The mm -hmm. conversations that used to happen inside barbershops have changed now. Yeah, like sure. now we have permission to talk about this stuff with our barber about skincare, about oh, wet yeah. shave and stuff like that. Back in the day, you didn't talk about that with the barber. You talked no. about everything else. Everything with the else. They were like your psychologists. Like yeah, you, you know, even in the morning, like the bartender, bartender at night. Right. Exactly. This. That's right. Now it's like, right. yeah, you can ask these questions without feeling embarrassed or, you know, totally foo -foo or any of that jazz. But yeah. I mean, like, right. it's a great so feeling, I'm sure. It's okay, very interesting. It's mm -hmm. very interesting to sit back and watch. That's awesome. Yeah. Love it, man. Well, I, I, I had an experience just, you know, well, it was probably four or five months ago, I guess, but uh, I took my son in. Like, my wife usually was either cutting his hair or taking him to a, a salon or something like that to get a haircut. And I actually got to take him to a barbershop, a proper barbershop to, to get a haircut. And he, he loved that experience. He tolerates the other experience. Of right. <laughs> That's you know, I don't always have time to do it. And of course, yeah. what use do I have for a barbershop? But, um, well, yeah, you'd be surprised. Craig does some wax work, man. too. Exactly. Oh, I can take care of that real good. He did a little know. twist string floss thing. Oh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> no, he, he loved that experience. Like, he, yeah. He, they, they handed him a drink from the cooler and they'd like brush off his neck with a little brush oh, wow. and, you know, the talcum powder. Nine yards with him and, and, and he loved it. He thought, you know, he was getting 
the full treatment in it, and he thought that was so cool. That so is so cool. grown up to be able to do that, you know. So that that's that's just you know, and what you're creating is you're creating an experience for him so young that mm-hmm. he'll be able to carry on. And you know, when he has those nostalgic smells when he takes his yes. son and his you know and an experience that he's gonna it's gonna bring him back to oh i remember when my dad or my mom took me when i was x uh age or whatever and it's right you know, those scents just never go away yes. you know, like the barbers kind of harness those smells and they just mm-hmm. only exist in the shop and yeah. it's, it's, it's not a great. salon it's not the same as a salon no, no it'll turn right. you off because the chemicals they use for the perms and yeah. stuff like that like that my mom uh, worked in the salon she was a hairstylist right. and whatnot I grew up with that smell. So when people say barber oh, yeah. shop smell, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Uh, salon smell is like that burnt smell. hair. Right. Like, oh, burnt hair, I'm, new hair color and everything. Yeah. I'm going to be right back, guys. My my earphones just told me that the, my batteries are low, so I'll be right back with the sure, truck truck. Side headphones. Hang Scott on. takes batteries. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, we got some questions coming in for you uh, down below here. Let me some of these. Um, oh, it's actually a very relevant question. Craig, what do you think of when you hear barbershop scent? Uh, you know what? The first smell that comes to my mind is always the bay rum. So that classic, very old Gables bay rum, more than anything else, oh, Gable. okay. is is what just – I mean, to this day, I have Gables in my travel kit whenever I take care of a client, and yeah. I put that on their neck at the end, and I do this. I fan the back of their neck, and they're like, what is that smell? You know, it's <laughs> – it's something that they haven't smelled, or sometimes they're like, oh my gosh, this smells like my dad yes. or my granddad. Yeah. And so that's the first smell that always comes to my mind whenever I think of barbershop smell at the Gables. That's good to hear. At that that, yeah. that yeah. kind of validates what I've been saying for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually, yeah. We, uh, uh, Douglas and I, uh, uh, Craig, were just talking about Bay Rum just the other day oh, and, and uh, what a, you know, what a history and, and vibe it, it really oh, wow. can give off. It does. And, it does. You know that that fits so well into that well, that yeah. discussion. Yeah. Fragrance is huge. You know, it, it almost tra- it traps itself in some aspect of the memory that it just never goes away. You know. Yeah. Uh, Put and that it, in it the next Park Avenue uh, scent. Uh, mm, well, hey, uh, you, it's it's it, I've got some, I got some notes. I've got some notes. <laughs> I'm working on. <laughs> yeah, you do. That would be great. I would love this in the Bay Rum. Could you imagine? Yeah, it'll yeah. be. It's, it's a lot of. Uh, yeah, well, yours. I mean, all of your fragrances. You kidding me? All of your uh, shave soaps are smell fantastic. So um, oh, you got something. Uh, you got a whole other thing going on here, though. This is like magical stuff. This is like. <laughs> Thank you, man. This is that like is so cool. fine barbershop type. Like this is. This is something. This is a different animal. Thank you. Wow, I, that's that's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know. Well. I guess I'll, I'll wait till the end to, to speak about that one if you guys don't even know yet. So, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> oh, it was the question was about uh, barbershop smells. And oh. so we're just, what's the first thing I thought of? And I, I mentioned uh, Gables, Bay Rum. Uh, oh, okay. was the first smell. You know, obviously Clubman is a big one. I, I call right. it a close second. The, number, the reason why I call right. Clubman a close second for me is that it's far more familiar. Mm-hmm. So I always like a fragrance that someone says, Hmm, what is that? You know, I always liked that type. And uh, I grew up um, always smelling my dad when he was going to, to, to work. He yeah. always had another cologne on. He smelled awesome. Yeah. And so uh, I'm a big fan of colognes. And so I always like to acquire colognes that someone can't identify immediately. So that's why, you know. That's what I get out of this. This is more cologne. Where I do st- I do stuff that's more straight. This is like, I do like aftershave. Type. This is cologne. Uh, it's like. Yeah, it has like a distinct. Body, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, it's sophisticated. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So you're and so you're not a guy geared toward like Aqua Di Gio and uh, Blue de Chanel and like those kinds of things that are like so mainstream that everybody knows it immediately. Yeah, I, I love them, but yeah, they smell I, great. But they smell great. But I always like someone to say, "Wow, what what is that? Did you have on there?" Yeah, you know, as do and I. Otherwise, there's so many scents out there. You know, I mean, like, exactly, exactly. exactly. I call it, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I always uh, think about it when you're in the elevator, right? Um, if someone has a cologne on. <laughs> And it's already a tight, uncomfortable scenario. There have been multiple times I was sitting in, the, in an elevator and someone says, oh, wow, you smell great. What yeah, is that? Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. it, it kind of breaks up that really odd, uncomfortable feeling in the elevator sometimes. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, depends how you answer. It depends on, well, <laughs> yeah. uh, exactly. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's always good to have that uh, mysterious scent. Oh, yeah. It smells good. It's pleasant. You know? Yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, and Clubman, that's that's totally to be expected. I mean, they marketed Clubman. just to barbershops back in the Big day. Time. That was True. their, yeah, that was oh, their yeah. bread and, and butter. I still use their talc, and I, you know, obviously they're 
Dr. Harris and a couple other really oh, awesome yeah. top. But uh, yeah, Clubbins, just so classic. Oh yeah. No. See, and I don't really care for Clubbin. Like, it, it smells okay, but it, like, yeah. it's not something I want to wear on a regular yeah. basis. You know, you, sh- you should definitely try Gables. You, you'd be yeah. surprised. Yeah. I love Bay Rum, so Gables Bay Rum, I probably Gables. Gables is nice. Well, it's it's, it's definitely it's the classic. Yeah, it's the classic. Thing. Yeah, I like that. Um, mm-hmm. we need to have more barbers on here to pick their brains on what they no think barbershop scents are. We've been asking the wrong yeah. people here for a while. We need to go right <laughs> to the source. Yeah, I think I would love to hear uh, definitely some other barbers yeah. what they. Would think of well, you know, um, I want to get people. From some people say like sandalwood too, like a- sandalwood. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could think of sandalwood. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some people say sandalwood. Some people, it's like the the oak moss, talc oh, kind fougere. of trap. Yeah, fougere. Some uh, people, it's bay rum. Some people, it's the clubman. Some people, it's barbasol. Some people, you know, it's, it's barbasol. Yeah, barbasol does have a smell. That's for sure. Well, it's just yeah. the collection yeah. of all of them together. Like yeah, the cacophony. Yeah, yeah. That's all the of them. Yeah. exactly. Right there. Just get a little That's bit true. Of that. That's very true. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, that, I think we've talked about that before, but that's that's what I think. I mean, even Mantix, you know, mentioned the leather of the chair. You know, as, as, as a matter of fact, I'm going to in the chat box the uh, tobacco. I did an article. I did an article back in December about oh, wow. just what is a oh, barber yeah, shop. Right. Scent. How cool and, is that? Okay, uh, yeah, I got to look at that. It was a, okay. you know, a data-driven answer with a lot of. I, I did a big uh, survey. Yeah, and I remember that. This, the results of that so uh it, it got some interesting results yeah mm-hmm. that's so cool yeah i'm gonna read that there we go wow you have such great articles on your site man that's i Thank I, you. you know i know you started with the 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 the, the um, videos and then you started you know you added you started doing a, a few blogs and then you said man i'm gonna sharp all of this <laughs> and i saw that name and i said who in the world how did you find that name and how did you acquire it and why wasn't that already taken? That was the first time. And that You're was dumb it. luck knew what it was. <laughs> was it? That, that was awesome. And then it just blew up, man. And I love how the articles are so relevant. I love how clean it is. It's so easy to get to. You've done a fantastic job on that Thank site. You. I'm Thank impressed. You. I love it. I love it so much. Thank so you. congrats to that, man. I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. Whenever I get a chance, I look through your tweets and I'm like, oh. Let me save that one. Oh, let me save that one. Because there's so much on there. So I love it. Right. It's true. Both of you were major inspirations for me when I was starting my blog back in the day, too. Oh, the you. men's room and the strapologist. So wow. Thank you, man. Yeah, I've pretty much stolen everything you guys are doing. So thank you very much. No, and you're welcome. And it's okay. It's all right. Hey, that's what it's all about. I mean, we're talking beards and I'm going to need you to sign something, though, Craig, saying it's okay. <laughs> it's recorded. I'm sure yeah. someone's recording this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. I love it. Okay, well, I think so we've got cool. some. Uh, I think we've got some questions here for Craig. If we want to get into, go it. for sure. it, Scott. Read them off. All right. So, first one from Chad Burns says, uh, "Thanks for joining us today, Craig. My question is a controversial one in wet shaving. What's love the it. best post shave routine we can do to eliminate irritation and be left with a great post shave feel?" That's a great question. I think that uh, you know that's uh, it. Is, it can be controversial. However, it really just depends on what the goal is at the end. Um, if the goal is to optimize the best healing practices for tomorrow's shave or mm-hmm. however often you shave, the goal would be able it, the goal starts from the beginning. Right. It starts with definitely making sure that your face is clean. It's prepped well. You know, I personally like to just do the face wash first. Mm-hmm. Um, really get the face nice and soft. And if you can do it, if you're not uh, using heavy granules, an exfoliation is ideal. Mm-hmm. Um, to really get, you know, the goal is to optimize the cutting ability of the blade. And we all know that blades cut hair, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you want to keep that blade um, off of your face. You want you want to keep, limit limit the number of times the blade is going to go across your face. That's how you're going to ultimately get the best and most comfortable feel after. So that's where it starts is the prep, and then you know realistically, then it's the shave cream. You know, want to make sure that you're using a shave cream, at least in my opinion, that uh, has very very um, very lightly scented or unscented that that's really going to actually help to really moisturize the skin. You know, personally, I I've always liked the pre-shave oil. Obviously, the Burke uh, Avenue shaving cream. You don't necessarily need a pre-shave oil, but you need something that's really going to help to protect your skin from the blade and moisturize and keep that glide going. Right. And next step is the post shave and the goal. Well, let me go back. <laughs> then it's the shaving practice, right? Because you know, I've, I go into the gym sometimes and I go into the uh, locker room and I see these guys just going at their faces. Yeah. And sometimes I want to just lock the door and say, <laughs> all right, let me, I'm going to give you a five minute lesson here. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, just that practice alone is going to reduce 
the uh, the irritation that you're going to have on your face. So everyone mm -hmm. is going to have some rawness and certain depending on what you're shaving with, depending on what type of blade, depending on what type of shaving cream, and depending on how you prep. So just really understanding that you wanted to go slow. You would right to use the right shaving cream, and the right shaving cream is going to support that. And then then the post shave comes. The post shave comes with the ability to use I always stand by an aftershave balm. Primary reason why I like an aftershave balm. Aftershave balm actually helps to quicken the healing process of the skin and moisturize the face for tomorrow's shave. Aftershave splashes, I love. I know a lot of people love them. I think aftershave splashes are awesome. But aftershave splash on an, on an already freshly shaven face is only alcohol on raw skin. And everyone likes that burn. So everyone thinks the burn is working. The burn is working. It's working on burning your face. <laughs> and so um, the goal is to put those aftershave splashes, you know, anywhere you would put a cologne on your pulse points, back in the ear, bottom Blood of the spots. neck. Yeah. Uh, all those areas that are going to help still give you the smell that you want. But use an aftershave balm because if you're shaving tomorrow, you want to make sure the skin is going to be as healthy and capable of taking another blade to your face you know and you know uh when you shave you're removing a layer of skin every single time you shave yep. so you want to have something that's going to be able to um you want to do something in the practice between those next 12 plus hours of rest for your face to handle the blade so that's Craig, me that's if i can if i can follow up on that let's sure, sure. let's say let's say uh it's it's too late you finished your shave gotcha. and you've got a big old raw red spot right there or mm -hmm. something and uh, I've been asking around, actually, what people's favorite uh, post-shave irritation relief product is. Oh, nice. you know, once okay. it's too late. I mean, yes, it's obviously the the the, the real practice. thing is to avoid it in the first place. But once you've right. got it, what mm -hmm. do you do? I've had some people just say, "Hey, just go with cortisone cream," and others say, "Yeah, sure. uh, a, 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 an ice cube." Uh, right. But Which what exactly? what can you recommend for? something to at least reduce the pain and redness after it's too late? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say that um, obviously most aftershave balms can handle it, but say for example, we're just looking at this big red spot in the face. Hydrocortisone cream works very well, but then you'd have to have it, right? So um, you could acquire uh, hydrocortisone cream. I like an olive block, especially if you have that big red mark on there, you might have also some very tiny um, redness that may surface from, for example, um, some bleeding that may occur that does burn and that does hurt. It's a little but if you're, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. But if you're a guy that's heading out to work and you may be wearing a collared shirt or something of that nature, that rushing and that irritation is going to really cause a problem. So you want something that's going to coagulate this, the, the blood as quick as possible. And then I would actually, um, I, I call it the, uh, the cut man technique. I really do go to the, to the, uh, the ice cube. I like the ice cube because if you are limited on this, on the products that you have in your home, um, if you have an olive block, that's great. Um, but if you don't, the ice cube works just as well. It'll take a little bit longer, but it does also slow down the, the flow of the blood to the inflamed, infl inflamed area. Mm -hmm. And then it does uh, act some, somewhat like a coagulated um, process, like the stippling powder does. And then after that, you know, uh, you can go super old school with some black pepper. Oh, uh, which will hurt like heck. That's true. Yeah. Black cayenne. Pepper. Cayenne does it too. Uh, like a black pepper really? kind of, yeah, it stops the, uh, the bleeding a little bit. I mean, it hurts. So, I mean, that's <laughs> like, like crazy, but I mean, it burns like crazy, but if you're dealing with like some particular bl uh, bleeding and you just don't have time, that could work a little bit. Mm. Um, but the ice works really awesome. You just sit there and sit tight. And then after that, put your aftershave bomb. It should do just fine because the goal is just like anything else. When someone, you know, say you uh, are hitting the face, the first thing you go to is you put, you know, something ice on your face. It's the same process. It's just the blood going to that particular area. So you cool it down and then you put something like a, even a moisturizer would work at that point. Um, but an aftershave balm would work more ideal to calm the, the stinging and the burning mm. yeah. and then it should be fine because the burning is only because the blood is rushing there. That's yeah. where, that's why I feel that way. So okay. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, I, oh, my pleasure. I am pepper. About, I, I, uh, I remember actually making a, an alum free, uh, stiffing pencil and I loaded it with cayenne and, uh, it, oh, it stopped it and it yeah, sting like hell yeah, worse than a stiffing works. pencil. But, uh, yeah, it works. Oh. Someone thought of that. I don't know who thought of that, but that's some painful yeah, stuff. Yeah, imagine that being the first guy to do that. It's probably an ex-wife, uh, actually. But uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I got a trick for you. Yeah. yeah exactly. What about uh, something like uh, you know, just witch hazel? Witch hazel, um, typically, uh, witch hazel has a little. At least in my opinion, has a little bit too much alcohol in it. 
Mm -hmm. um, I like to, whenever I use witch hazel on the face, I always do a one-on-one, -on -one, some water and then witch hazel. Yeah. So it still has the capabilities of uh, anti-inflammatory um, purposes, mm -hmm. um, but it does reduce the sting. And so a lot of men also deal, some men deal with hyperpigmentation. And so alcohol content typically helps to speed up hyperpigmentation on the face. So if with pure witch hazel, no matter how small the alcohol uh, content is in witch hazel, it can, for some men, continue to speed up the process hmm. of hyperpigmentation in that area that they're putting it on gets a little darker. So I always like to do a one-on-one, -on -one, one to one. So water and then um, yeah. uh, witch hazel put on your face, and it worked. As, it'll work very, very similarly because you're using the other ingredients that's in witch hazel to help. It's an astringent, right? You know, it just helps to tighten the skin and tone the face. So um, it'll work just the same. It'll just reduce the bite, the bite, right? Okay. <clears throat> and alcohol content. And it, you know, even when you get the thayers, it's just alcohol free. Not many people know this, but witch yeah, hazel yeah. is naturally occurring in in witch hazel. I mean, alcohol is right. naturally occurring it, in witch hazel. Right. Exactly. So, so there's no exactly. added alcohol, but it's there's no added. I no. use yeah. um, aloe vera. I keep aloe vera in the fridge. Oh, and aloe, you know, you were telling me about that the other day. Yeah, actually, we were talking about the cubes. We're talking about that, that, the cubes. Cube oh, I didn't try that. To yeah. incorporate into your uh, ice cube technique there, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people know this. Yeah. But, uh, Craig invented the big chill. You guys have seen me rip him off for years with that, with the wet towel in the fridge. But I added the aloe juice element to That's it. Awesome. And, uh, you know, That's use awesome. the idea as a stepping stone for that. But that has been yeah, you know, one of the best beautiful. in the world is the aloe juice in the fridge. It's so cheap now. The stores that. just keep in the fridge and you splash that on. And it, yeah. it, it, it pulls the heat out of your face. Wow. So even if you have a nose burn, like a burn on your nose during the course of the day, that's why people put aloe, they sell aloe gel. But it, it's an added okay. bonus when you keep it in the fridge, too. It really helps remove the heat from it, that the color comes back wow. to you. Yeah. I got to try that. Oh, I really have to try thing. it. You were talking about the color. If you have a scrape on your neck or some burn, yeah. you're worried about that zinc oxide in diaper rash cream. Ooh. Put that oh, yeah. on. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. works. I, was actually, I put that in my bombs. I get I buy zinc oxide powder. And I can't oh, no sell way. it because it's considered a drug once you do it's that. It's a drug, yeah. But I put that in there for myself. If I'm wearing a collar or something or a tie during the day and I'm kind of just rubbing there, you put some zinc yeah. oxide bomb under there. Again, you can make your own or you can just buy diaper rash cream and that's going to prevent that yeah, from uh, irritating you. That's a great you. idea. I, I never thought of desitin, so I won't. I won't desitin, yeah, that does not smell good. Ooh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But oh, zinc oxide powder, you should be able to pick that up at just about any like uh, anywhere natural grocery store kind of a place, yeah. right? So I'll write that down. I, f I didn't. I forgot all about that zinc oxide. Hmm. Yeah, zinc oxide. It's it's a it's a game changer because a lot of guys they think they have sensitive skin or they have yeah. problems mm -hmm. with their neck, but they don't realize what they're wearing during the course of the day is they're wearing this collar, and yeah, that's what's exactly. doing. You know, it's all the turning around. It's the irritation. All the turning around. Nothing yeah. to do it's with the shape. Sometimes it's the uh, the uh, soft uh, fabric softener, whatever. Maybe sometimes it's going to be irritant too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, so many things. Yeah. Really wow. Is. There we go. That was a great question. Love that question. Thank you. That yeah, was a good question. I love this show. We get so many ideas out of this. <laughs> Scott, what do we got next for, for Craig? We've got, uh, what's the difference between a barber and a hairstylist? Okay. Well, <laughs> very, very quick answer to that. The one definitive difference between a barber and a hairstylist is the fact that a barber is licensed and only licensed to shave with a straight razor. That's ah. the definitive difference. Um, if you want to expand a little bit more, typically a barber is mostly trained on shorter haircuts. Um, and hairstylists, they're expansive more on longer haircuts. Um, so they specialize more in obviously women's hair or longer hair. And then obviously then they get into the, the, the chemicals of the, the uh, mm -hmm. perms, mm -hmm. the relaxers, the, the nails, colors, the, you know, the colors. And so barbers aren't um, licensed in, I'm trying to remember, make sure the barbers aren't licensed to do nails um, and, but, or makeup for sure. And so, uh, <laughs> But you know the light. The, this definitive difference is uh, the straight shaving. Right. Yes, sir. I, I'm licensed in both, so I had to test in both um, categories, and I do recall as not for sure doing makeup. The barbers. I, I, I think had to it do makeup slightly by state too, doesn't it, Craig? Uh, it it varies very slightly by state, but so far they are. There's a there's a huge push right now to actually merge the licenses. Hmm. Um, yeah, to merge because they are uh, noticing that they're having still far more demand in some states for uh, hairstylists than barbers. And so hmm. they're just realizing it'll just be more, make more sense to merge and or almost do a one license and then add on just the key pieces that a barber may need, hmm. i.e. a straight razor. Um, so a lot of states are trying to move in that direction. I'm not quite sure if it's going to get a push. There's a big pushback because a lot of the folks that are, um, 
the ones that would grant this are very old school barbers yeah. and and they're like, no, not on my watch. So uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm hearing. I'm sitting there thinking, yeah. and I, I'm sitting there thinking, if I ever wanted to be a barber, I don't think I would have any interest in 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 coloring people's hair or right. you know that kind of thing. It's just like I'd want yeah. to cut hair and shave people and, and that's, shave. I, I'm exactly, good with that's, that, you know. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, and it's it's that that's exactly um, pretty much how it it narrows. It's it's a big difference outside of you know you'll have some schools that will add a few more. Um, uh, aspects of cosmetology mm-hmm. or, or hair or beauty yeah. in the barber space. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, you're, you're exactly correct. You know, the hair cutting, understanding the biology about the head and the face and things of that nature, and then the shaving techniques is a lot heavier on the barbering side mm-hmm. when it comes to haircuts and shaves and salon or the cosmetologist. It's Hope that answered the question. Is there much yeah. in barbering? Uh, no, the only math you're probably going to be wondering about is like when they teach about the number one and number two, if they're, if they're teaching by home haircutting guards or, uh, oh, or, okay, okay, okay. or, uh, angles based on, um, how you hold the hair to cut it and things of that nature. Or how to calculate your tip. Yeah. <laughs> Barber side yeah, to water yeah. ratio. That's perfect. Yeah. That's uh, perfect. So, you know, Greg, I have a question of my own now. Sure. Uh, in Beverly Hills and whatnot, you've had a lot of celebrity clients. Have they ever often like are ever taking you on the set too of certain oh, movies? Yeah. To do? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, who, who are some of the people uh, that you've worked on? Oh wow. Oh, it's a whole lot. So I was on the Ballers <laughs> set about a month ago. Uh, I don't know if you watched that HBO really? show Ballers with The um, Rock and, and, and The Rock. So I never serviced The Rock. I'm not that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that. He, he's had his hairstylist or his uh, groomer for his like, <laughs> Beautician since he was in the first WWE or something like that. Wow. So she's, she's got him on lockdown. Yeah. But I dealt with a handful of other, those, a uh, couple of those guys, a couple of um, characters at like Omar and a couple of the, the ball players on there. Mm-hmm. Um, I've worked with, um, whoo boy, uh, Chris Tucker, um, Tim Tebow, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Um, oh, really? Let's really? see. That's cool. I work with Dr. J, Michael Jordan. Um, wow. Wow. Did you say Dr. But, J? Oh yeah. I, I shaved him at the, um, I did a, Michael Jordan celebrity I he was out in Massachusetts. I didn't know Dr. J was out in he's out in California. Oh no, no. I well I actually went to the Bahamas. I went to the Bahamas. I was flown to do a celebrity golf tournament for the Michael Jordan golf tournament in when it was at Hell of the Bahamas. Yeah. Wow. And I was in the locker room for a whole week with, with some of the biggest Hall of Famers. Yeah. That you talking cool. like I met Marlon Dr. J and all those ago. guys. Yeah, it's just still Wayne Gretzky. I mean, those guys are just, hey, how you doing? I'm yeah. like, you want to shave? I'm like, please. Yeah. Come on. Let me touch your head. Yeah. Let me touch your head, please. Let me see. Oh, your hand is real. Wow. It's <laughs> your that ring is real. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it was so yeah, uh, quite a few in the past in the um years that I've been out here. Um, really awesome folks, to be quite honest. Athletes, producers, directors, off screen and on screen. Um, and so it's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun and a lot of cool guys. And you know, at the end of the day, a lot of guys are just you know, just the average guy working, you know, that just really wants to um, get a treat sometimes and or just just willing to, you know, it's important to them to look great. So I'm any here any to- horror stories, Craig? Horror stories in reference to it, as a fo- it, it, my, what, my thing with way? like being a barber is like someone's going to come in that hasn't washed their hair in like two weeks or something like that. Oh. And it's going to skeeze me out. But I mean, like there's got to be some horror stories. I mean, like, I or like, huh. like somebody without you, naming, you really yeah, without naming names, house. of course. <laughs> Or like absolutely yeah well i can tell you um i had a very interesting and i'll definitely this guy's name out but i had a very interesting uh experience when i was down at the that invitational down in um in the bahamas that there was a gentleman that uh that i asked him throughout the throughout the course of the week hey you know i'm here i was in this really big locker room it wasn't a weird football locker room it was really big luxurious golf locker room right, right. And the guy would come in, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here for a shave. He's like, yeah, thanks. You know, he's like, no, no, no thanks. I said, sure, no problem. So as the week kept on going, he'd come in from time to time. And then uh, he comes in, and man, by this time, his beard was pretty big. <laughs> yeah. And I said to him, I was like, so uh, ready for that shave? Because that evening was the big gala. Everyone was in there getting haircuts and trims up, yeah. things of that nature. And this guy, his back was facing me when I said it. And man, this guy turned around. <laughs> And looked at me and said, I mean, in the loudest voice humanly possible, I said, I don't want a shave. And I looked at him like, whoa, all right, dude. I mean, and what was, it was so, 
out of character for what I expected from him, so to speak. Yeah. He probably was having a, he probably had a really tough time golfing that day. <laughs> but I I didn't I just realized in a moment like wait a second I might be going toe to toe with this football <laughs> player right now, and it might it might be ugly or great for me. I'm yeah, gonna have yeah. a really great story <laughs> with him asleep on the floor or vice versa. Yeah. But it was just it turned out to be a really uncomfortable situation. I was like, hey man, you know I'm just here to to provide services, my friend, you know, and it was, and it, it, it was ugly for a moment, but that guy in particular, um, I, I've never really liked that team, but <laughs> for getting sure close now, to figuring out who this is. Yeah, uh, for sure. I've, I'll never ever root, uh, root for that team. I don't care. He'll have to retire, you know uh, what I mean? So, uh, but that's probably a really, probably the ugliest one. Other than that, I just, you know, the average guys that just come in and ask was really, funny questions or pretend to um they like there's a lot of actors so they, they <laughs> like to pretend when that's they called in. acting it's not pretending at that yeah point. <laughs> oh exactly you're right they like to pretend that they're more than what they are and oh, i'm yeah. just here to cut your hair you know <laughs> right so, other than that but nothing nothing nearly as uh exciting as maybe some other folks but and probably you know since i can't really say <laughs> too much of anything but that story till this day really sticks to me like man i don't like that guy yeah you know, well just, i mean that must happen though like jerk, man. I, like think is going to be one way that maybe you idolize oh, and, up to, and then they treat you the exact opposite what you know what i mean like oh yeah i would say that out of when i moved to los angeles i had a list of folks that i wanted to hopefully meet yeah and i said man when I meet such and such or such and such, the one big one that I, 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 I joke around all the time that my mom has always been a big fan of Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah. And, it's, and, and she, she's literally – him in the you, chair. <laughs> Yeah, if I ever cut that guy's hair, I, am, I have no longer any purpose in living in Washington, <laughs> in her opinion. Like, you have satisfied my need. <laughs> and so um, a lot of those folks that I've met have been really nice, but a lot of them have been very surprisingly disappointing. Like, wow, you are – not nice. You just yeah. play a really nice person. You yeah. Know? And so, uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, I, I I feel very comfortable, and I tell, uh, I go to um, a lot of schools and teach um, barbering techniques and things of that nature to a lot of Paul Mitchell schools and other beauty schools. Right. And I always tell the students right off the bat, if you instill boundaries from the get go, you'll enjoy your career. And I say, don't be afraid to fire your client. Yes, that goes and for I will, Yeah, exactly. So I fire my clients all the time. Now <laughs> all my clients are awesome. But in the beginning, I was like, I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. And so um, at the end of the day, if you do that, then you'll enjoy your, your mm -hmm. career. And so mm -hmm. that's what I've done. Yep, I've tried all my guys are cool now. That's what you're going to do. you got to weed them out. And it's... You do. You do. Or else you're just not going to, oh, I got that guy again. You yeah. know, like, oh, you know, who wants that? The personal, it's just too close of yeah. personal space to be uncomfortable with that person. Totally. Right. I get that. Mm -hmm. Scott, what we got for next question? Next question is, uh, what does Craig shave with, a DE or a straight? Oh, I shave with most of the time a straight. Really? Um, but I do also do a lot of the times DE. So, you know, I'm always, right now I'm using Rockwell. Rockwell is uh, really cool. I like that. I've also used one blade. I have one blade. The very, very first purchase was Mercor HD um, short handle. Oh, yeah. And then I said, oh, I got to get a long handle. And so... Um, <laughs> I didn't realize it was that short. Until yeah, I, yeah short. they weren't lying when they called it the short. Right, man, is this for my son or you know? So uh, <laughs> the long handle works. Obviously, so I have two of those, and so I just go back and forth with it, um, depending on how I feel with it. And you know, these, you know, my facial hair right here is real. You got to do it with a straight razor, and so that's essentially what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else All we right. got? Great question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, when using, let's see. Yeah. When using one scent for your shave and a totally different scent for your aftershave, do you end up smelling like a French brothel, meaning too many scents? Well, I'm not quite sure what a French brothel <laughs> yeah, smells like. Good answer. Just kidding. Clearly the wife's uh, in the room. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, no, honestly, when I, if I'm using multiple fragrances, I, you know, because I'm such a fragrance fan, I am always going to choose one or two that are going to complement each other exactly mm -hmm. or cancel out the, the other right and so um, that's typically how i will go with that option um there's a lot of fragrances out there that you can layer um cologne specific to layering or aftershave bombs and or aftershave splashes that get that get that option as well and so that's typically i mean clearly that's going into a really interesting um routine like oh my gosh so i have 
this plethora of aftershave mm-hmm. splashes and colognes. Okay. Now, which two are going to blend just perfectly, <laughs> oh, yeah. right? No. So that's me. That's I want to make a wheel. Personality. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I probably like, could use a wheel. Like a color wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah because there are. I mean, and people talk about barbershop scents. Well, that's the barbershop right there. Barbershops are complementing scents. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, not just one exactly. line of scent, and people often confuse that for. That's a fun right. example. I mean, back in the day, aftershaves and shaving soaps, even by the same companies, did not, they didn't smell the same. You had they Williams, right. which smells like yeah. mosquito repellent. <laughs> I mean, like, but you'd use them one after. Oh yeah, so it didn't work too well. Yeah, no, well, I totally agree. And people get caught up in the in the idea of matching their soap to their aftershave, and people don't realize that you you know what, a shave soap, the scent on it doesn't last yeah. that long. No, it doesn't last. The that long. alcohol splash right will burn it off anyways. But like, yeah, people exactly. want air freshness for their car, candles. It's like yeah. I don't want to enable this. I mean, I want right, to right. sell you guys some stuff that you want, but I got to draw the line. Like, no, no yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, because it's not sometimes those fragrances may not translate well. From your face on into the car. Oh you yeah. Know, just, oh yeah. Geez, yeah. All over the place. Into the candle burning in the room. I mean, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to get those scents to smell all the same. Yeah. In what, different environments. different mediums. So does, you mean you have people that want a candle that smells like cad? Yes. Really? I've actually wow. made one ex- an experimental no for one guy, but I call him Mandel. Did it work? They're mandels. Mandels. Yeah. Mandels. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but, you got to trademark that. Yeah, friend. right? I know. <laughs> well, it's yeah, live like now. It. Well, Ace <laughs> is saying quickly, Cavendish quickly, quickly. everything. Right. <laughs> Cavendish. <laughs> yeah, Cavendish. Yeah, of course Ace does. Okay, what else we got, Scott? Uh, let's see. The last question that's here is, uh, sure. is a particular routine recommended for our first shavers who often deal with acne? It's mm. a good question. Uh, so repeat the first part again. Is the is the is there a particular routine that's recommended for our first shavers who often have to do? Yeah, with that? yeah, that's um that's a tough one. Well, I think that um you definitely want to make sure that you're going to stick with ingredients that are uh, non comedogenic So you want to deal with uh, shaving creams or any type of ingredient uh, going from moisturizer after shave balm afterwards. Something that's not going to clog the skin, right? Mm-hmm. Or clog the pores. And so at the end of the day, you know, a lot of most products now, because of these challenges, say non-communogenic. And you could just literally go online and type in ingredients that are non-communogenic yeah. and then stick with that. Um, there are, like, for example, I remember Aveeno, for example, makes a pretty mm. decent gel um, oh, yeah. that shaves pretty well. It's an oatmeal-based one yeah, that sure. um, it is non-communogenic. And so that was, I think, one of the first on the market that I ever saw. Saw, uh, caught a hold of that really did what it was supposed to do. Right. And so, you know, there are still, it's still out there on different reasons why folks get acne. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's not a one size fits all situation. However, a lot of folks also deal with acne, also struggle with um, not using a moisturizer because they mm-hmm. feel that a moisturizer is going to be what causes it's the acne. Oily, yeah. Right. But the problem, the actual solution is, is, the number one reason why a lot of men actually or women for that matter have acne is because it's the overproduction of oils mm-hmm. on their face. So because their the skin is trying to compensate for being too dry. It's out of balance. Yeah. Exactly. So the moisturizer will balance that, therefore mm-hmm. reducing the aftershave. Um there, therefore you might realize that you're not acneic at all. It's right. just it had a deficiency from the get-go. Exactly. Well and using so, a single blade is certainly going to help with that. Like the you know the oh, absolutely. uh the, the multi-blade cartridges is only exacerbating the problem with acne. Yeah. Absolutely. But, well, yeah, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, when you when you understand that you're removing a layer of skin every time you shave mm-hmm. and then you have a multiple blade razor that's, you know, just having a feel there on your face, then it's you're just that much more uh, susceptible to being having dry skin. Right. And so if you're not following up properly with an aftershave balm, then, yeah, it could exacerbate is exactly word <laughs> exacerbate the problem. <laughs> That word, yeah, I just gave up. That word. Yeah, <laughs> Thank no, you, no, Father. I don't even go there with that one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so that 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 would be my answer to that one. I hope that I answered that one properly. Yeah, I think that's great. Excellent. That's yeah, awesome. no, that's great. I think time of day too when they're shaving. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Change well, the pillowcase. Yeah. Change the pillowcase frequently. Oh my gosh. Tell me about it. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, a, a loom. Yes, that's big. Also, a uh, loom is great. What's that? Again. After treating it with a loom moisturizer Alone. on top of that. Yeah, yeah that yeah. stuff cures back acne, everything men and women use. It's been around for like 4,000 years. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's just yep. amazing stuff when it comes to – I wish I knew about it in high school. Man, I wish I knew oh, about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. 
I think we all could wish we used. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. There's a lot of things <laughs> I wish I knew in high school. Oh, yeah. man, tell me about it. I'd <laughs> be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm glad. Maybe there's some things I'm glad I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. when I was high school. Yeah, that might have yeah, saved me a lot. <laughs> Maybe there should be a class in high school. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, it's you funny you said that. Stuff. Yeah, you know, you're right, because um, not in a high school level, but I taught, taught a class a couple years ago at um, West Point. Mm. Oh, no kidding. Uh, yeah, there's, they, they needed an opportunity. Um, they, they, there was an opportunity at that point in time to educate men, those men, on proper shaving, you know, mm. because they can't wear beards, right? Right. But then what turns out is after I got to talking to them, their whole concern was just men's grooming in general. After yeah. the shaving part was complete, they're just like, all right, so explain to me this, you know, my eyebrows, explain to me this, my forehead, you know, all of these things. At West Point. That, at West Point. And, you know, what's interesting, I didn't know this about West Point, is that they're very big on training the perfect gentleman. Mm -hmm. Officers, and I think yeah. Officers, right? So it goes beyond their uh, understanding of uh, in education and warfare, but it, it actually goes into the full on perfect gentleman, right, which right. goes into the men's grooming and representing so, uh, the brand of the Navy, representing the brand of the, of the army. That, 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 army. That, 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 yeah. But, Annapolis but uh, Annapolis also, they have a, I haven't spoken to those guys, but I'm quite sure it's similar. Yeah. You know, if they're trying to train these folks to look sharp from top to bottom, right. I didn't know that, but, no, um, but it makes that helps sense. them a lot. It helps it them a lot. It does man. make sense. Yeah. yeah. It does absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Man. That's so, really cool, though. There you go. We do that. I think so. Yeah, that was fun. I, I'll be willing to do it again. Yeah, I'll say. We'll, Speaking we'll of that, okay, so what else? What, what can we look forward to coming up in the future for you? Wow, great question. So, um, the, I'm currently working on an aftershave bomb. So I would think it's going to drop if I can get it perfect, the formulation right. It'll be the end of um, summer. Oh, cool. That I'll get the aftershave balm out there. And then following immediately after that would be the face wash. So I'm trying to get all the products ready before the end of the year, if, if possible. And I have a good friend of mine that I'm going to tap. He, he makes leather goods. So I'll, I'll, mm. I'm going to, if I can accomplish that, I'm going to ask him if he can make a couple of really cool doubt kits. Yeah. Um, or like a, you know, giveaway as, or maybe holiday gift or something like that. Cool. And um, combine all three and make it maybe put the Burke Avenue logo on it. Yeah. So cool. that we'll see. We'll see. I mean, that's the goal, but the, obviously the primary focus is just really finishing off the line. It's literally a, a three-step process, wash your face, shave your face, protect your face. And that's just something that I want to make sure everyone gets, understands. It's very simple for us. We don't have to have a boatload of stuff on our, um, you know, our, our uh, bathroom counters. Yeah. And um, that's the goal. I also, uh, I didn't realize that I was going to be able to share this until the 23rd, but I just recently won the Men's Health Grooming Awards for my shaving cream. Oh, right. nice! So I was, I was. Congratulations! Uh, was, thank you, thank you very much. I was, uh, I didn't. It, it comes out on the 23rd, which is Tuesday, but um, I didn't think I was going to be able to share. But then I went to the awards party. And they took a picture of me and they posted it, nice. men's health posted it on their Instagram. I said, well, the cat's out of the bag. I'm sharing. So <laughs> nice. um, I shared it. And uh, so I really had a good opportunity to, to really speak to those guys. They really were very honest on my product. And I met quite a few people. And it was just, you know, it's, I'm still a little numb from it, you sure, know. Sure, sure. Um, but it, it's, a very, it's an honor, tremendous yeah. honor. And at the end of the day, I've gotten so much feedback from not only from you guys, which in my, that's the core, right? Right. Um, and it, 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 I'm taking pride. It's, it's a prideful experience to know that three and a half years of work um, went into this and it's getting um, the respect, you know, right. and people are really appreciating it for what it is. And it's just truly my goal in to ultimately giving you guys a product that is not just going to just do one thing, but do multiple things across the board. Yeah. Uh, for you and your face and so um mm. you know take try to take it to the next men's grooming to the next level and you know leave a really true stamp in, in the space so you ask me what's next that's that's just me just really continuing to do what i do um educating as much as i could humanly possibly can yeah. in the space of this world and delivering products that you guys will work will like you know and enjoy yeah. so yeah. that's it that's excellent. It. It's That's been a great, great episode today. We have we running low on time, guys. If there's yeah, any no more problem. last minute questions, we'd like to you'd like to get them in right now. 
Craig will be more than happy to oh, answer. No, I'm no killing problem. it today. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> actually, I, I do have a real quick question for Craig sure. based on something he said very early in this uh, roundtable about uh, a, a wash with exfoliation. Yeah. He said, you know, the large granules, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. How, 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 what kind of balance do you need to strike, though, between using an exfoliation wash with, you know, shaving, which is going to take off even more of the, yeah. of the skin layers. Uh, I mean, how can you tell what's too much and what's enough? Uh, oh, man, I love that question. So uh, ideally, what I like to tell folks is if you're exfoliating your face at all, um, you want to make sure that you're not doing it immediately, for example, a day after a shave. You know, your face is still pretty sensitive. So if you do feel, if you only have a face wash, for example, there's a couple... Uh, Anthony makes a brand of uh, a face scrub that has really very very fine granules, and so does a lab series. Those are pretty gentle, where they won't irritate the average person's face after a shave. Ideally, though, you want to stick with anything that's going to exfoliate your skin, maybe the day, a uh, second day. So the the day, not the day after, but the following day is when you'd want to exfoliate your skin. You really only need to exfoliate your skin three times a week, two to three times a week. So when you're dealing with thicker granules, for example, that would be the you use a thicker granule, say on Monday morning, when you're getting, you rested your face for that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you really want to get a really, get all the dead skin cells off your face, use the bigger granules for it. For example, the apricot seeds and, um, poppy. Uh, oh, sorry. Poppy seeds. Oh yeah. All those. Yeah. Sesame, those big, yeah. You could tell that the, the really heavy ones, those you'd stick with for the ones that uh, deal with essentially prior to shaving. And then as the day goes on, say, say for example, you're a daily shaver or every other day shaver, then you can go with much finer granules. Um, and those are out there with the multi-action face washes, the Anthony's and a handful of other uh, companies now that have very, very fine uh, granules that you can use on your face. Um, uh, w w men typically have thicker skin and more oilier skin. And so uh, the more clarifying the product is using on the face, the more uniform your skin tone will be. And so if you can keep very, very, very fine granules um, and use it on your face for exfoliations, then you'll always have, it'll reduce hyperpigmentation and it'll typically give you a more uniform skin tone, skin complexion. Well, that's good to know. Oh, yeah. cool. Thank you. My, my pleasure. pleasure. My I pleasure. tend to use uh, an exfoliant on places where I don't shave, like my forehead, like okay. my neck. Yeah. But I yeah. just take the brush and the consideration and the shaving part as my exfoliation for those yeah. areas. Yeah. But it's not many people talk about the forehead and whatnot. Forehead. And that's and I don't use uh, I, poppy seeds and stuff like that. I use them in body soaps. Yeah, yeah. On the rest of my body, but on my mm -hmm. face, I'm always a little apprehensive about yeah. dragging that stuff across. So I really like the advice about using the finer, you know, finer ones. And what would be good because you have a beard and you wear it quite often, it would be good to use the finer underneath. Right. A lot of times it comes. A lot of guys with beards don't necessarily care for the underneath, the skin underneath. Oh yeah. And then when they shave it off, they look at their face like, whoa, what happened? It's like yeah. completely different skin tones, right? So yeah. Oh, um, yeah. the way you take care of your forehead, try to do your underneath your beards as well. You'll be surprised. You'll still be very even. So it wouldn't be so obvious when you take off your beard. Oh, that's that's good advice. Yeah, sure. My pleasure. This is this is great. We're going to have to get you back again. In fact, oh, yeah, we have, a bar, have a bar on every couple of months or something yes, like that. You yes. can take I'd, questions. I'd love, to. I'd love to. This was fun. I like it. This venue is so cool, man. <laughs> I really like this. This is a lot of fun. Thank There's another couple of questions here. If, if yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, Craig, with the product being a shaving cream as opposed to a shaving soap, your product, the Burke Avenue product, sure. uh, would we use a brush to apply it? Yes, you can use your hand use a brush. or you can use a brush. It's either or. They, I personally have always been a brush fan, and mm -hmm. I, you'd be very surprised um, – how great a lather you'll be able to get with the brush. So yeah, I, I can testify to that. With the brush yeah, me too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you guys. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, and then uh, one other quick question. Tips for shavers with rosacea. Wow, tips, but that's tough. But we know rosacea, quite honestly, is um, activated with heat. So um, typically what happens is you, if you have rosacea, the hot towels obviously is what's going to really um, um, affect that area wherever rosacea typically the rosacea usually is on the t-zone for the most part right. and i have very rarely seen much rosacea that happens around the shaved area so to deactivate that what you want to do is you can go with very lukewarm water just keep it below the nose keep it below the nose most shaved creams i know mine will will still lather very well without hot water oh yeah and so um if you do that you'd be able to uh, avoid 
activating rosacea because once it's activated, it takes sometimes days for it to um to disappear. Calm down, yeah. So to calm down. So if you uh stick with lukewarm water and typically stay below the nose, you should be you should be okay. So it's the hot water that's triggering or part of the, the trigger. Yeah, it, that's part. Yes, big and time. Then when people yeah. wear hats too or something yeah, like they that. Put it off yeah, it's warm. Yeah, any yeah. type of uh, heightened temperature outside of the body temperature, body heat. We'll yeah. start to rise it up. Some folks, it's even more effective just by sticking their hand out in the sun for a few minutes or their face, it pops up. It just really depends on how their body performs right. when it comes to, or it's, it's effective. But when it comes to shaving, you know, everyone likes to put the hot towel or warm, mm -hmm. super warm water, right? It's not needed. Uh, it really isn't needed for super hot water and especially for gentlemen and females that use, uh, that have rosacea, want to keep it lukewarm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great question. Thank you. Well, Craig, where well, can people find out more about you and what you're doing? Well, thank you very much. Well, you have uh, CraigTheBarber.com. You can always find me there, and TheMensRoom.com, um, as well as my newest venture, um, Burke Avenue, www.BurkeAvenue.co. Um, that's my shaving cream. And please, you know, take an opportunity, enjoy it. Uh, I love, love, love feedback. Like I shared before, any feedback I, I could hear good or bad, I'm willing to listen to it. If you're willing to offer feedback, that means you care enough to share it with me and I'm willing to listen. So excellent. Um, awesome. Please enjoy it. And thank you guys for this, man. This was <laughs> so awesome. I'll do it again. All right. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's good. To, it's good to find you again, Craig. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my friend. Oh yeah. You won't, we won't lose each other again. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Not this time. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Well, thank you all for tuning in today for another Wet Shavers Roundtable. Join us next week for episode 88 with Craig the Barber. No. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking it up. I'm putting it on my calendar right now. <laughs> Take care, guys. All right, guys.